Hi, in this video I'm going to cover how to do a one sample proportion test in Excel. Unfortunately, Excel doesn't have one of those uh, built-in capabilities in the analysis tool pack. If you had the data analysis tool pack here, they have a, letter, a lot of other statistical tools that you can do, like t-test, but there isn't one for a one sample proportion test. So, how do we do it? Well, we're going to have to kind of do it manually. And what we can do is start with a problem, set up our hypothesis, and use some of the functions in Excel to do this. So our problem is, let's say the number of households that have widget X is 52%. So we go and survey 200 households, and 150 of them have widget X. So does this evidence, this survey, support the claim that 52% of households have widget X? So how do we set up this hypothesis? We're going to say, well, uh, the no hypothesis p equals 0.52, or the mean in a way. And the alternative hypothesis p hat does not equal 0.52. And we'll use a 0.05 significance level. So our alpha will be 0.05. So our p, we're going to just plug this in here. And I've got these formula text so we can see what formula that we're using or function that we're using as I go through each cell. So P is going to be 0 0.52. The number of successes, those are 115. So we did 115 over our sample size 200. Now in terms of doing a proportion test, we do want to ensure that our sample size is large enough. And there are calculations that you kind of want to use to look and see if the sample size is large enough. But with here, with the 200 sample size, it's large enough for this example. P hat is basically going to be our number of successes over the sample size. So it's going to be that divided by that. Let's see. This is not working because there's no formula here. This just looks at formula text. And for our alpha, that's 0.05. So what is our numerator? So we're going to look at our z test. So it's p hat minus p. So it's going to be equal to p hat minus p. That's our numerator for our test statistic. And for our denominator, it's going to be the square root of p times 1 minus p. divided by the sample size, 200. That's going to give us 0.035. So what is our z statistic? That is our numerator over our denominator. That is this divided by that. And our test, whoops, let's see. F8 over F7, was that right? No, sorry. It was F8 over F9. 8 over F9 per center, and our Z statistic is 1.55. Now, what do we take from that? Well, we have to compare it against the critical value. So our critical value is based off of our significance level 0.05. We're going to use the norm.s inverse function, and we're going to find out what is our Z critical value. So that's going to be 0.05. 025. Now why do we do 025? Because we are testing for a two-tail test. That's why we had that not equal sign. I'll kind of show you what we're talking about. I'm going to bring up a distribution curve later on to show you why we're using 0.025 because basically we are taking this 0.05 dividing it by 2 because we have the right tail portion and the left tail portion included in this z critical value. So this is going to give us, this particular function only gives us a left tail test. You can see that it's uh, negative. So we're just going to put an absolute, we're just going to wrap that in the absolute function. Get rid of that 9. And that will give us our z value of 1.96, which if you've done statistic for a while, a 0.05 significance level for two tail tests, the z critical value is going to be 1.96. And we see that our z statistic is below 1.95, therefore we do not reject the null hypothesis. It does support. This evidence does support the claim. 
Another way to kind of further solidify this test is to look at the p-values in addition to the comparison of the z statistics versus the z critical value. Now, with the different p-values, we can we can look at our different tests. We're looking at this two-tail test, but I'll just go through the functions for each of the test p-values here: the left tail, right tail, and our two-tail. Here, we're going to use the norm dot s dot dist function and our z value is our z statistic and we're going to use the cumulative distribution function that's going to be true close parentheses press enter and we have our left tail value of 0.94 our right tail value we're going to use there is no function for the right tail value so what we're going to do is just do one minus because it's going to be the difference of that so everything everything under our curve should equal to 100 percent so it'll be one minus that, it's gonna give us our right tail. So we do one minus norm dot dist. Same thing where our Z is going to be our Z statistic, cumulative true, close parentheses, press enter, and then we've got 0 0.0597. Now to do our two tail test, that's basically our right tail test twice. When you think about it, it's going to be the right tail part of the test and the left tail part of the test, that's our two tail test. So what we're going to do is just do two multiply and we're going to multiply that by uh, this value here, right? So it's going to be that one minus the norm dot s dot dist function, of course our z statistic, true for cumulative, and we press enter, it's going to give us 11.94 and change. And this is fine here because our Z statistic is not negative. So if we wanted to uh, ensure that if we put other numbers in here that turn our Z statistic into a negative number, maybe you want to wrap this on into an absolute function. So it returns the positive of that. So that's if we're going to use this kind of as a template and put other numbers in here. But that basically is our two-tail test. And this is what we're going to use because we're looking at our hypothesis, which is looking at a two-tail test. And that number, 0.11, is greater than 0.05. And so we still do not reject the null hypothesis. So the evidence, looking at our p-values, still does support this claim. Now, if we want to kind of look at this from a charting perspective, let's add some calculations here. This is going to look at the confidence interval. So it's, it's going to be p hat plus or minus the z critical value multiply by the standard deviation or standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So in our lower case, it, so we're going to take p hat for our lower one minus the z critical value put this into parentheses, the z critical value multiply by the standard, uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is our denominator down here, close parentheses, press enter, you got 0 0.505. For our upper number, that's going to be our p hat plus our z score, our z critical value multiply by our uh, denominator denominator here, which is our standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Press enter, and that's our upper area. So after we figure out our lower and upper bound, that, that gives us basically our confidence interval. If I just kind of want to look at this graphically, I can go and just find a website for that to kind of plot it for me. And so I just do normal distribution curve, draw a plot line. This one looks pretty good that I've tried. You can see here, if we're doing a two-tailed a two test, we have our area of probability is 0 0.05, right? 0 0.2, 0 0.025 on one right tail, on 0 0.025 on the left tail. The summation of that is going to be 0 0.05. Now, if I want to plug in my numbers here, Control C to copy for the lower bound, and let's put this over here. The upper bound is 0.64, and my mean here, my sample portion mean here, 
and my standard deviation here. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. If I recalculate that, we are going to be given our 0.05, which explains our significance level, right? So graphically, that's how it's going to look, but that's just some extra information that you can add on there if you wanted to. So that's how we can perform a one sample proportion test in Excel. Unfortunately, there's not a quick and easy way to do it using the data analysis tool pack like they have for other statistical functions. But if we have it laid out, we can probably just perform our test here. So I hope that helps.